This video is published under the Creative Commons license BYNCSA, which means attribution, non-commercial and share-alike. Third-party material has been used for which the permission is specified explicitly for every diagram, photograph or whatever has been used. Please mention the author as Andreas Pfennig, Products, Environment and Processes, Department of Chemical Engineering, Université de Liège, Belgium. A disclaimer applies. Welcome back to this video series on thermalunit operations. We are still in the section on general considerations. I have shown you in the last videos how a step construction can be performed and derived for a certain section of a counter-count process that can be subdivided into theoretical stages. Now the question is of course, well, what links these individual sections of such a counter-current process? And one thing we can regard is that in between we have a side stream withdrawal. That of course conflicts with assumptions that we made actually for a section of the column that we have for which we have derived the step construction before, because there we said that the L dot and G dot streams are constants throughout this section. This will of course change the L dot and G dot streams, and we have to ask the question: well, what does that mean for the operating lines? And that's exactly what we want to derive in this little video. So let's look at such a side stream withdrawal. Let's first look in the case where we have a side stream withdrawal just from the L dot phase. So the withdrawal is just from one of the two phases. And what we see is that we have an L dot entering, we have an L dot prime leaving below, nomenclature to simil similar to what we have seen in distillation. And in between we remove the side stream, the S dot. The G dot remains unchanged because we don't remove anything from the G dot stream. Concerning the compositions, the nomenclature is the same as before. We have the inlet streams indexed with an I and the outlet streams indexed with an O. So we have XI, XO, YI and YO. Now we can of course look at that, well what is it actually, this horizontal line, this dashed balance line. It's actually it's, it represents, so to speak, a control plane in our equipment just a horizontally, mentally thought, uh, hypothetical plane that somehow cuts through our process. It is not related to any theoretical state or similar. And since that is so, there's actually no reason why the YI and the YO should be differing. What's entering is exactly that what is leaving. The G dot isn't changed at all. Same as actually for the composition of the L dot. The X is entering here and uh, leaving here. In between there's only a diverting of the inlet stream, so to speak, into two directions, the S dot and the L dot prime. That doesn't change the composition. So the XI and the XO should be, should be identical as well. What does that mean for the operating line? Whatever ever happens to the operating line, it has to occur at the point XIYO, which is the same as XOYI. So at that point something happens. Now what is it that happens? Apparently we can see that directly. The L dot over G dot, defining the slope of, of the operating line above, changes because below we have the slope L dot prime over G dot, which differs from the slope above because in between we have removed the side stream. In order to determine, so to speak, the L dot prime related to the L dot, we have to set up the balances, so let's do that properly. We are in steady state, so zero equals. What is entering? Well, entering from below was the G dot, entering from above was the L dot. What was leaving? Leaving is the G dot towards the top and the L dot prime towards the bottom, as well as the S dot, our side withdrawal stream. And we realize, of course, that the G dots are identical, so they cancel. And then we can directly solve that, for example, for L dot prime equals L dot minus S dot. And as I said, you may have guessed directly that this should hold. Now we said this influences the slopes, so how about the slopes? Well, on, on the one hand side we have the slope above. That's of course relatively trivial, it's L dot over G dot, nothing has changed. And how about below? Well, it's the L dot prime over G dot, apparently. We mentioned that already when discussing the slide. And now we see that actually the, you remove that S dot from the L dot, so the L dot prime is smaller than the L dot. L dot prime smaller than the L dot. L dot prime smaller than the L dot. So the numerator is smaller here, meaning that this slope is smaller than that slope. So the slope below is smaller than the slope above. 
that we can of course represent in the y-x diagram. We see that something happens at that composition, at that point, where xi equals xo and yo equals yi. So at that point where we withdraw something from one of the phases, the slope changes, and below the slope is smaller than the slope above. This is L dot prime over g dot, and this is the slope L dot over g dot. So we can simply depict this L with, uh, side withdrawal by a kink in the operating line at the composition at which we remove the uh, side stream. That's easy. Second thing we can look at is if we have a side withdrawal from the g dot stream. Now the L dot remains unchanged, but the g dot changes from the g dot prime below to the g dot above with the S dot towards the side. Again, we have our control plane. It's just a mentally horizontal plane, infinitely thin, no storage capacity, nothing that can accumulate there, which means that the xi and xo again have to be identical and the yi and yo have to be identical as well. Yeah, it's also not related to anything like a theoretical stage or similar. Again, we realize that we have above the slope L dot over G dot and below we now have the slope L dot over G dot prime. You can, of course, directly set up the balance, but let's do, it, do that again, step by step, in the proper way. That way we know that we don't make too many errors, also in exams or so, if you, you better write down everything in detail, because that you, then you are sort of certain that nothing uh, too bad happens to, to what you write down. Entering from below was the g dot prime. Entering from above was the L dot. Leaving towards the uh, top was the g dot. Towards the bottom was the L dot that was unchanged, and to the side there was the S dot. Here we see, as you may have guessed, that the L dot cancels, and we can solve the rest, for example, for the G dot, so G dot equals G dot prime minus S dot. And again, we can regard the slopes above. It's of course the same L dot over G dot, that remains unchanged, and below well, we have the L dot over the G dot prime. Oh, a little bit large, that prime, over G dot prime. Now, we see that in this case, oh, I forgot a prime somewhere, right? This should be a prime. So, G dot equals G dot prime minus S dot. This means that the G dot is smaller than the G dot prime, or other way around, G dot prime is larger than the G dot g dot prime is larger than the g dot. So here the denominator is larger than here, which means that this ratio, this slope, is smaller than that here. That is, the slope below again is smaller than the slope above the withdrawal point. And we can of course plot that as well. It's the same, but now it's defined as L dot over g dot. But of course the exact position depends on how much we withdraw. Here it's assumed that the change affects the slope in the same way. So, but you see that in both cases, the slope below the side withdrawal is smaller than the slope above. Okay, so we see a G dot or L dot side withdrawal always leads to a kink, where below the side withdrawal, the slope is smaller than it is above. Now the question is, of course, what happens if we just assume for the moment that the S dot has a negative numerical value? What does that mean? It means actually, in reality, we are feeding something into the column. Of course, the state of that feed should be identical to that of that phase to which we feed that feed at that point where we add it. So that the conditions are the same. So the side withdrawal will have the same uh, phase state and, of course, the same composition as relating to the G dot if you were removing something from the G dot phase or to that of the L dot if you were removing something from the L dot phase. So in distillation, for example, the L dot phase was boiling liquid. So if our feed is boiling liquid and has the same composition as that in the, uh, in the, in the uh, countercurrent process, in the distillation in that case, presumably, then of course it's just the same balances as before, only with respect to the definition of the sign of the direction of flow the flow, the numerical value now is negative. So we feed something to the process at exactly those conditions that we have of that phase in that countercurrent process at that point. So the phase state as well as the concentration, which is of course also describing the phase state, are identical as uh, the phase to which we feed it at exactly that point in the column. Then of course, 
Well, the balance is identical. Yeah, the va variables are the same, only the numerical value of the S dot is negative. This only affects, of course, exactly this ratio. Because in that case, now the slope isn't smaller below, but it's larger below. So like this. So if we have a side withdrawal, the slope is smaller. But if we feed something exactly to one phase, exactly at the conditions of that phase in that point, then the slope will be larger, so steeper, than the slope above. So we are able not only to describe a side withdrawal, but also a feed under certain dedicated conditions. Well, actually, they are not as bad. In distillation, for example, you frequently add the feed more or less at as boiling liquid on the one hand side. And secondly, you can show actually that it is optimal to add the feed exactly at that composition point, so to speak, in the column, where you in the column exactly have that composition that minimizes for the, the experts the exergy losses. So that may be not such an uh, untypical case actually that you feed something exactly to one phase exactly in the, at the conditions in the, in the equipment. So we can regard the withdrawal and the feed in this single diagram in a simple way. In both cases we have simply a kink of the operating line and above we have the L dot over G dot slope and below we have also the corresponding L dot over G dot, but with the variables that apply below, so with the L dot prime or G dot prime. If you want to summarize that, we get this take-home message, the withdrawal from or the feed to one of the phases, just one of the phases, with the composition and the phase state equal to that of that phase at that point, lead to a kink in the operating line at that position and composition. Well, with that I would like to say thank you for watching this short video on the side stream withdrawals and actually also feeds under certain conditions and I hope to see you again in the next videos.